tonight on Dragon's Den. Whoa! Dragons, I'm a multimillionaire. I don't need money. I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> you worked in three investment banks. God help us. I think it's a very difficult market. You've really got to be very, very good. I'm torn because I know what I could do with it. You've g given me nothing, absolutely nothing. I was about to go out and I just talked myself into potentially making an offer. Welcome to Dragon's Den. This is the place that when those lift doors open, entrepreneurs have just three minutes to deliver the business pitch of their lifetime. Right, ready, Rog? Yeah, I'm ready, Phil. Right, so we're going in. Covers off. Do the best you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our first candidates for the Dragon's Cash have come a long way from humble beginnings as a waiter and forklift truck driver to build a multi-million pound transatlantic business. Yeah, we've got a lot of experience, but going into the den is a completely new experience for us. We're more used to being on the other side of the table. OK. Yeah. You set? Ready. I've learned the pitch. I've done it 100 times. I'll probably forget what I'm about to say next. If you get stuck, just look at me. Yeah, OK, well done. If I don't take over, panic. <laughs> They're here today with a completely new business, a personal security product. And they want a dragon to help fast track it to be their next big money spinner. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. I'm Roger Willems. And I'm Phil Stratford. And we're the owners of the multiple award winning Door Jammer. We're here today to present you with an opportunity to invest £80,000 for a 15% share of our company. Have you ever been in a hotel room where you don't feel 100% safe? You look at the door locks, you think they're not fit for purpose. Uh, wouldn't it be good if you had a simple solution that you'd give to your children when they go off uh, to university or they go on holiday that would make them travel and feel safer? Well, Rog, now there is a solution. OK, Doorjammer is a small, innovative, uh, patented uh, device that fits neatly under um, almost any door in the world. Uh, can I just demonstrate it to you how it works? So you fit it under the door and then you begin to wind the, the jammer up till you get contact with the door. You try the door uh, to let you know that it's connected. But if you then had to leave the room in an emergency at any stage, we can do, go down and do it, pull, pull the jammer and it will come away. We have sales in over 25 countries. So come and join us and let's scale the sales together. No forgotten lines from Roger Willems and Phil Stratford, these days hailing from opposite sides of the pond. They're hoping a dragon will unlock the door to success by investing £80,000 in this sideline to their business. Keep the girls away from me. In return, they'll give away a 15% share. The product has made Sarah Willingham keen to get hands-on. I would actually quite like to try it with the door. Sure. Would you mind putting it back and yeah. we'll have a, a tug on it? OK. You normally want to try and get in with it, wouldn't you? The well, idea... But you wouldn't be this side of the door, would you? You're trying no, to prevent no. people from getting in. OK, he's ready. We actually thought you'd come and kick it, Peter. It's def I mean, Keep it's out of my bedroom, Sarah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a deterrent. I think it's it's a deterrent, but there's no doubt if you wanted if you wanted to. Come on. Then. She'll give it a kick. Hang on, hang on, I'm going to let that. I'm going to leave that to somebody who's better dressed for it. I think. Whoa. 
Here we go. It's quite good. Shall I give you the final touch? <laughs> but not brilliant. Nick Jenkins takes advantage of a rare opportunity to flex his muscles with disastrous consequences for Phil and Roger. And it's kicked off thoughts about the product's necessity for Peter Jones. Why wouldn't you... You know the door stoppers you have? I have them in my house. They're wooden. Mm. They're, they're, they're Why usually, wouldn't you just use that? They, they, um, they, they usually kick away. This gives you a sort of higher level of protection. Or, but it didn't stop Nick. I mean, Nick is not known for being a bit of a bully boy, and yet it took him about 10 seconds to get into the hotel room. It takes you about three seconds to wake up. But the thing is, that doesn't help me if I'm lying in bed in my underwear. The whole point about this product surely is to prevent somebody from getting in, not to give you an extra 10 seconds. It's to prevent silent entry is the idea. And, and of course, really? like most security products, you know, um, if, if someone wants to get in, most places they can. I mean, I was in a hotel in Malaysia uh, where they had guards on the lift and I had door jammer with me. And at least I was able to get a degree of comfort that had a level of security that, that um, I could control as well. Um, well Roger, I think that's just salesman's nonsense. Yeah. If your product only gives a 10 second delay, you put a table or a chair next to the door, it's exactly the same. Phil and Roger can't seem to convince Peter Jones that their product is the best solution for the problem it's designed to solve. And now, Deborah Meaden wants to talk hard cash. Um, how much do they sell for? They sell for $24.99. So how much are they costing you to make? We, we buy them for $6.39. Oh, so you're not making them? We, we are making them. Ah. So Door Jammer buys them for $6.39. We make them in our factory for four dollars fifty. Okay, you probably need to explain that to yes. me. Yes, so we have a business. We've been partners for more than thirty years, and we do industrial products, business to business products. So that's your separate business, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you're asking it to us ourselves. to invest in a business that only does door jammer. Only yes. does door jammer, yes. Um, not surprisingly, I, I just want to understand the relationship. So this other business you've got, how big's that? Seventy million dollars. Turnover. Yes. Turns over $70 million yes. a year. Yes. Um, that's quite a good business. That's a big business. Can I ask what, what profit does it make, company? Uh, EBIT does about $10 million. So you make $10 million a year? Mm. Um, <laughs> you've got more money than me. <laughs> uh, come and sit here. <laughs> <laughs> Dragons, I'm a multimillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't need money. And from this door stopper, we have made millions. Can I, can I just say, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> News of Phil and Roger's other successful business has certainly created a congenial atmosphere in the den. But now all are back in their rightful places. That $70 million question is still hanging in the air. What are you doing here? You know, you, you'd have many other ways of gaining routes to market. I mean, you must have. Well, when we first got Doorjammer, we spoke about how we could possibly get it to market. And we only know the business to business route. That's through trade fairs. We, we think that you have got the type of expertise. You've certainly got the profile, and we don't. We actually pitched it to Robert Dias about a year ago, and I mean, they, they weren't that interested. Well, that's interesting. Why not? I mean, they're you know they're professional think... buyers. Their jobs to find new product and this and you're bang on. That's exactly do, who you talk you know, to. So... You know, I think we weren't ready. I think that we were too amateurish for them. We we probably couldn't answer all the questions that a consumer company would want. I will not accept that it's the way you presented it because any professional buyer will get over that. They will you know they will think oh good product like that. Mm. I mean, when I first started with it, I tried to find a PR company to handle no, it. No, no. It's the same thing. Roger, 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 Roger focus. focus. I am being very, very specific. So why were you told they were not interested in this product? It's, we found them Home Depot, Costco. They all look at the product, say they're interested, decide that we're a one-product company and channel us off to a, to a distributor. You see, that worries me even more. 
That worries me even more because those names that you've just listed, I've got product in, one product. And they were so quick off the mark, I can't tell you. See it, love it, buy it. You know, so that's my worry. I don't get it. The dragon with contacts in the product's target stores casts doubt over its saleability in them. And this successful business double act's inability to get the product to market has sent Tuka Suleiman into a state of confusion. I can't work the pair of you out. <laughs> you know, here you are, you're acting a little bit twiddle-dum and twiddle-dee, and you're acting as if you've never been out there, but you're, you're very astute, the pair of you. Yeah, we, we're professional uh, business guys, you know, we, we're both out there doing the business that we understand. What we're probably saying quite badly is that the consumer side of it, we've not got proper experience in it. And coming to the den and getting someone on board who understands that will drive it forward. But if I invested, you'd say, we want a dragon on board so they can really help us get the product out there you'd put all that pressure of the sales back on me. I think to myself, how many hours a week have I got? You don't need a dragon, you don't need my money. And for that reason, I'm out. Phil and Roger's success in business has led to failure with potential investor Tuka Suleiman. And it doesn't look like it's gone down well with Nick Jenkins either. The thing that I really enjoy is investing in businesses to, to really make a difference to support people who are going to go and create a great business. I'm not really terribly interested in, in, in effectively supporting a little tiny sideline of one of, you know, of, of, of your enormous business. It's just not that appealing. It's not for me. OK. So I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. My biggest concern, you've already tried to sell it to a lot of people, and those are the people that I would be able to introduce you to because they're UK contacts and they've already said no. So genuinely, I don't think I've got a, lot, a great deal to add. So I'm out. You're going to sell some of these. You're going to make a bit of money. But it kind of, it feels like it, it's not that important to you because you've got this whole other successful life going on, which I'm not, certainly not going to quit it. Well done. But it kind of then loses a piece for it. Mm. So I'm afraid I'm out. Deborah Meaden becomes the fourth dragon to show Phil and Roger the door. Does Peter Jones have more faith that these successful businessmen have what it takes to build another multi-million pound enterprise? I think you have done incredibly well. I'm a little bit frustrated at the fact that you've done so well in your own business and yet you thought that this could be the route that you need to go and sell this product. I don't buy into the product. I think it is totally over-engineered. But I don't think it's going to affect your lives. You are multi-millionaires in your own right, and I congratulate you. But um, I'm not going to invest in something that I just don't think is necessary. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank Fantastic. You. Thanks very much, Thank you very much. It was really interesting. Bye-bye. So Phil and Roger's concerns about their ability to sell becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy as they fail to persuade the dragons to buy into their dream. You never see yourself in some, from somebody else's eyes. Absolutely, yeah. Maybe it was us. Maybe working with guys that are running a, a $70 million business, um, maybe that put them off. Maybe, they, maybe they, they think we should have been poorer and that might have made a difference. Really good. I really enjoyed that. The one bit that was really unexpected, Rog, I don't know whether you noticed, but I've got a new partner, Peter Jones. Oh, Come yeah, absolutely. He seems to up. be my new business partner, but don't worry. I'll never swap him for you. Thank you. Our next entrepreneur has an impressive and varied CV. He's a Cambridge postgraduate with careers in modelling and banking under his belt. My strategy then is just be myself, put across my passion in the business. I'm not feeling um, particularly nervous. I've delivered thousands of presentations to multi-billion dollar finance hedge funds who rip you apart if you miss a punctuation. And then you get 
castigated. So I, to be honest, I, um, I feel quite excited actually, yeah. Um, hi, dragons. Um, no, just do this. Um, hi, good afternoon, dragons. Um, my name is Sunil Kavui, and I'm here to offer you 5% of my food to go business, Great Grub, in exchange for £80,000. I'm, I have been a successful model, I've been a successful investment strategist at a leading investment banks in the city, and now I run the food to go business, Great Grub. Um, a few years ago, I was working in the city, and I decided to take some time out and travel the world, and sampling the local cuisines. And uh, then I decided to set up my food to go business, and then Great Grub was born. Um, Great Grub is a food to go business inspired by street food on the go. All our products are halal, and there's five, um, um, main trends that are revolutionising the food to go industry. One, food on the move. Two, healthy eating. Expansion of branded concepts. Greater variety of choice and halal. At the moment, we're trialling in Asda, Sainsbury's. Um, we're in final talks to supply Compass and Sodexo for their football grounds and their universities and also in final discussions with EasyJet for their winter routes. Thank you, Dragons, for listening to my pitch and I have uh, um, some sample platters for you guys to try. With his sandwich wraps inspired by street food from across the globe. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll deliver two others. Oh, oh, you're sweet. Thank you so much. I'm sweet. Yeah. Sunil Kavori is hoping to appeal to the multicultural British consumer. Thank you, darling. But first, he'll need to tickle the taste buds of the dragons, who he's hoping to extract £80,000 from. In return for the cash, he'll give up 5% of his business. But first, Peter Jones wants to find out more about his colourful career. Sunil, OK, so tell me a little bit about yourself. So I, when I, I went to university at London School of Economics. I did my master at Cambridge University. And at the same time, I was modelling. So, um, you know, actually, I did a, quite a lot of work for Big Brother and O2 mobile phones in 2003. I became an A-list celebrity. I was on TV 70,000 times. You were, you were an A-list? You were an well, A-list Well, apparently celebrity. so. But that was, you know, obviously I'm relatively educated. So I was doing this at the same time while I was studying. But the career progression was either going to acting or continue modelling or, or, or finance. And, uh, I mean, I decided to go finance. And, wh and which... You went to Cambridge University? Yeah. And what degree did you get? A Master's in Finance. My undergraduate, I studied at London School of Economics and I was awarded the Richard Galtz Prize for first out of 675 students. And so I, I joined actually Deutsche Bank after that and then I moved to Morgan Stanley. I did it pretty much the same and then at JP Morgan. Because I, I have a real work ethic. I used to get into work at about 6 o'clock, leave at 10, 11 o'clock. It's because I enjoy it. It's not, not necessarily for the money, it's just because inside I'm driven. I'm, I have a strong work ethic. I like being success in everything I do. What, what is special about the food? What we have found in the supermarkets is was the food was relatively boring. And I try to bring the street food concept, which the British public love, to the supermarkets, to the retail. So I believe that the product, it's not available um, at the moment um, relative to the competitors. Sunil continues to emphasize the work ethic that lies behind his food to go business concept. But Sarah Willingham, the investor who knows firsthand how to grow a lucrative food business, is far more concerned with his product. I think it's a very, very difficult market. If you're saying that your USP is that you're halal, my sandwich has got bacon in it for a start. No, no, it's think, halal it? bacon. It's not... Halal bacon? Yeah. It's not pork. It's, there's no pork in it. It doesn't... The, the, oh, okay. I think one of the issues is, is that your market is halal. But, um, it actually, it's a, a dual product. The reason why we made it halal is that any, everyone can eat it. It wasn't specifically for Muslims. It, uh, and you see a trend. All f brands are going that way, like from Subway, they've converted 200 of stores to halal. The problem is, is it's not communicated at all. So if I am Muslim, I want to, I want to know yeah. that that's not real bacon. And if I'm not, I want to know that it is real bacon, yeah. probably. So I, I think it's a very difficult market that you're entering in, and I think you've really got to be very, very good. 
Sarah Willingham casts doubt that Sunil's product range can find traction in a marketplace crowded with takeaway sandwich big hitters. But it's his packaging that has caught Nick Jenkins' attention. On this packaging, it has uh, Goga 4 ink, 43 Barclays oh, Square. Yeah, so that the, the company owns um, Great Grub. Okay, so Goga, Goga, Goga 4 ink, ink. So is that an American company? Sorry, is it what? Is it an American company? No, no, no. Why is it ink? I, 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 I had my partner this ask, said, uh, suggested the name Goga for ink. So I said, fine. Uh, no, I mean, no, I no, didn't no, care no. About... Sorry, sorry. There's a legal distinction because Goga, if it was, if it was a UK, is it a U... yeah, It's a UK it, company. It's yeah. a UK company. Okay. Then ink uh, is is incorporated. It's a short for incorporated, an American oh. company. Oh, okay. Well, you worked in a bank. I mean, come on. Yeah, but I, I was on a trading floor. I don't. I mean, I, I don't. That's, that's slightly worrying. I mean, uh, he, 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 this is quite, quite, quite basic. My partner chose the name of the company. No, no, it's not Go -go the name of the Inc. company. Go -go Inc. Inc. is not the name of the company. No, no it is. It's he, the legal designation of it. He, he, I know, the, the legal designation. I'm, I'm not sure why he... He, he re registered Well, I'm not sure why you didn't notice it. No, no, registered the company as Goga for Inc. OK, so if I went into the company's house now and I would find Goga, Goga for Inc Limited, would I? Yeah, I presume so. But it, it's just that... You presume well, so. It's the name of your company. company. Sorry? Wrong. You presume because so. No, no, it's true. Yes, yes, you wouldn't find quite it. Apart from the fact, quite apart from the fact that I'm... I, it, it concerns me that you own a company called Goga for Inc. Didn't strike you as slightly odd. Hmm. And you worked in three investment banks. God help us. A large dose of incredulity from Nick Jenkins over Sunil's uncertainty of his company's legal name. And now Peter Jones wants clarity on the price tag he's placed on his business. You're valuing the, this business at 1.5 million today. Yeah. So. How much money have you made? Give me, give me this year's revenue and oh, profit. This year's revenue, I mean, we've only been trading for a year. Um, with £112,000, about £20,000 profit. Um, yeah. Um, what, what's disappointing is that you make the assumption that actually, Peter, that demonstrates that this business today is worth £1.5 Well, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Because unless you're going to tell me you have a forward contract with somebody, which is going to give me comfort that the next 12 months mm. your mm. earnings substantially increase to get to yeah. a valuation in of this course. food business. So, no, so what is your forecast for the next 12 months? Forecast of sales and revenue is based on, I would say, EasyJet, Sedex and Compass and a coffee chain. We, we, revenue is probably... Have you got any of those at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So okay. we're in discussions with them. I've, in discussions is different to but actually... They, they, no one signs a formal contract. So. What is your forecast for the next 12 months? I would say so 1.1 million for revenue and 300,000 profit, net profit. But you don't have any contracts whatsoever that will support that at the moment? No. Sunil fails to justify that hefty valuation on his fledgling business. And that's not gone down well with Deborah Meaden. You are representing your business. And what happens in Dragon's Den is we ask you to explain your business. We haven't even got down to that, because you're not really sure you presume that your name is going to No, 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 I, meant, I, I am sure. I just right, said... So, I, OK, I, I although you don't appear to, to get the difference to between Inc and Limited. I, I, I apologise for that. No way can you come in here and say that a business, £120,000 profit, Sorry, £120,000 turnover, £20,000 profit is worth £1.5 million. Pounds. OK. You've g given me nothing. <sighs> Absolutely nothing. I'm really sorry. I, I won't go over it. Okay. I'm out. Thanks. Some food for thought from Deborah Meaden, who becomes the first dragon to walk away from the deal. Sarah Willingham, who made her millions rolling out restaurant franchises around the globe, has also arrived at a verdict. Sunil, um, the real problem is, and I, I understand why you did it, but when you come in here and you, you did spend a lot of time kind of giving us the, sort of the big I am, and, and actually all we really want to know is about the sandwiches and how you're going to get it into the, into the stores and why you love that and what's great about them. Um, I'm sorry, I'm out. Okay, thanks. 
Sarah Willingham declined the opportunity to add Great Grub to her investment portfolio. Has Tuka Suleiman been convinced? Oh, so you look like you had better seven rounds with uh, some heavyweight fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, um, I'm not going to invest, but I, but I wish you all the best and I'm out. What I want is evidence of where this business is going to be in three years' time and the likelihood of that happening. I, I'm sort of expecting, a, you know, a, to, be, to be much sharper on that. I'm afraid I just can't get excited enough about this to invest. I'm afraid, unfortunately, I'm out. Oh, thanks, Nick. Okay, thank you. Nick Jenkins loses his appetite for investment and walks away from the deal. Only Peter Jones remains. So far, he's been unimpressed by Sunil's lack of forward contracts and his hefty company valuation. But has the food entrepreneur's work ethic struck any chords with this last remaining dragon? I think you've, you've made a misjudgment of the pitch that you've put across. Yeah. Um, I don't think you should take this personally. I'm not going to invest in the business, but I really think you need to go away, really think about the product, do a bit more research, look into it, spend a bit more time with your partner, and then look at how you can go and build a successful business, OK? OK, thanks. So I'm going to say, look, Sunil, I'm out, but I wish you the very best and good luck. OK, thanks, Peter. Unfortunately for Sunil, his sandwich business never managed to excite the dragons. He leaves the den with nothing. It's just such a tough market. I think, it, I think it's back to the drawing board for him. Mm. I think so, yeah. It is disappointing because, you know, they didn't look at my work ethic, my drive, my ambition, nothing. But it doesn't fault the long-term business potential, so I'll fight on. For sure, I'll fight on. Still to come on tonight's show. We can't reveal the name on television. I'm sorry, you know the deal. You come into the den, everything is on air. If I, if I was to do it, I'd want a bigger percentage. It's not worth my while. Will anyone clinch an investment? I'm not saying it's not possible, I'm just saying it's immense. These days, there seems to be a price comparison website for everything. But our next entrepreneurs think they've cornered a section of the market previously unexplored. They've big plans for their business and are very specific about who they want to get them there. What's that? Does that look all right? Yeah. I, yeah, I'll pay you So there's two dragons we're interested in bringing on board. Uh, the first is Nick, because of his success building a startup tech company. And uh, the other dragon we're interested in is Sarah, because of her experience building a comparison site. Hi, I'm Sam Coley. And hi, I'm Steve Pierce. And we're the co-founders of TickX. Here today asking for £75,000 for 5% equity in our tech business. TickX is a platform to discover great events, compare ticket prices, and buy in seconds with no added fees. It's as simple as that. And our aim is to become the sky scanner or the go compare of event ticketing. So, why do you need TickX? The events industry is fragmented. There are too many websites, too many ticket sellers, and too many claims to offer the best deals. Knowing there must be a better way, we created TickX, which compares prices from 20 leading ticket sellers and for over 50,000 events. In September 2015, we raised £175,000 to accelerate our development. We've since been featured in Virgin's Young Entrepreneurs to Watch, and now have over 18,000 event goers using our platforms each month. And our users love TickX because it's completely free to use and we charge no additional fees. We make our revenue by receiving commission on the sales we generate for our ticket seller partners. It's a win-win for everyone. Comparison sites have been proven in almost every industry. And now it's time for events. Thank you for listening and we look forward to your questions. 
ticking all the boxes with a confident pitch a 24-year-old Steve Pierce and Sam Coley, who's 23. They're touting 5% of their ticket price comparison website in exchange for the princely sum of £75,000. Sarah Willingham wants to know if a platform like this is just the ticket to revolutionise the events industry. Guys, um, I know a reasonable amount about the um, comparison market, both from the consumer end and also from the business side. And, you know, if you look at comparison across financial services or across travel, you've got a massive variety of prices for lots of similar products, not always for the same. Yeah. Now, with tickets, if I want to go and see Adele, who governs the price of that ticket to see Adele? Uh, so the artist uh, will set the, or the promoter will set the price of the ticket. OK, um, so if I then go online, can I buy that ticket more or less anywhere? Yeah, so because you've got these tickets split across multiple sellers, is one ticket seller can sell out of the cheaper band of tickets. Now, if you go to their website direct, you would think they're sold out and you had to have to buy more expensive. But with ours, because we compare them all, you can find someone else has those tickets still available and those savings then can be quite uh, big. And tell me specifically about whether or not, when you've got six people who are able to sell tickets for a particular event, in order to be able to see the availability of all of those tickets now, I would have to go into each one of those websites. Yeah, so uh, and I will see a different availability map on each one. Is that right? So what most people do in the past is you get Google open, uh, you'd click in each, go in, have a look. You might go onto one, find it sold out, go and look at another. Uh, obviously, that's really time consuming and painful. So. We, we take that away straight away. What? I, look, I, think, I think it's a very good idea. Um, I'm, I'm slightly surprised that hasn't been done so far, but then... We get that a lot, yeah. The Dragon, who built an e-commerce business worth £120 million, gives the entrepreneur's business plan his seal of approval. But Steve and Sam's other preferred Dragon wants to know how they intend to reach a mass market. Where the biggest challenges by far is why is the consumer going to come to you rather than anywhere else? How do I know about you? How, well, that's through our marketing uh, strategy. What but is the marketing strategy? We've, we've been in dialogue with Google uh, about doing um, sort of app promotion, and desktop promotion campaigns. The problem you'll have is you're competing against guys that spend hundreds of millions of pounds. It's that traction that makes you the first port of call, rather than Ticketmaster. Because yeah. that's still, it's, that's it's, what's in the it's consumer's changing, yeah, mind. It's changing the user behaviour as well, because people know car insurance, you know to compare prices. People need to start realising that events, you should do it as well. And to change that consumer behaviour for car insurance, it has cost hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds by a group of very large comparison sites over the last 12 years. Not saying it's not possible, just saying it's immense. The Dragon with price comparison form provides a reality check on the entrepreneur's ambitious plans. And now Nick Jenkins wants to know how they've funded their progress so far. You've raised 175k. Yep. Uh, from whom? So we've got three. Uh, angel investors, mm -hmm. and we've got one of the biggest music brands in the world. One of the biggest music, music ba brands in the world. Yes. A, 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 br so, a brand. So yes, it's an iconic right. music brand. Go on then. You're going to have to tell us. <laughs> uh, we can't reveal the name on television because the what? CEO of the company has asked us to re keep it confidential. I think that's really. Uh, he likes to control his own press activity. Is he a controlling shareholder then? Uh, he. Uh, they are at the moment. Yes. Oh, so, so, uh, so let's talk about that. Let's oh, talk about talk about the shareholding. Um, who's got what? Uh, so, uh, the biggest shareholder, apart from ourselves, uh, has 10%. Uh, Can I just ask what he invested to get that 10%? Uh, so, um, they... Shall we can't really reveal that. They don't want to reveal that either, unfortunately. This is nonsense, guys. You can't come in here and try and ask for money and then say, I can't tell you who the other shareholders are, what they invested, at what time they invested. You've got to share that. No, we understand it's hugely important and it's why we have been given permission to reveal uh, He can't control term sheet. that. But, he... but you are prepared to reveal, you're prepared to reveal that to us uh, before we make a decision, but you're not, you don't want it going on air. Uh, yeah, that's their decision. Uh, well, I'm sorry, you not... know the deal, you come into the den, everything is on air. 
So, have you got the forms in that I can look at to see who this investor is? Yeah. Ridiculous. That's the uh, term sheet. Thanks. And what's That's that? the shareholders, That's agreement. The shareholders agreement. Oh, yeah. Got it. Oh, that's who it is. OK. Yeah. To be fair, I have no problem with the Ministry of Sound at all. I think they're a good brand, good company. Um, so that's the tick in the box for me. Attempts to keep things confidential never go down well with the Dragons. But a business that's attractive to a big industry player will certainly win you friends in the den. However, for Deborah Meaden, the revelation suggests this is a case of too many cooks. You're going to need more cash and you're going to need a bit more time. And I would just become one of those list of great names that you've got involved in a business. It's kind of not my style of investing. Very rarely do I just put my cash in and say, lovely, you've got my name, now just get on with it. Okay. You know, I so I'm, I'm, I won't be investing. Thank you for your time. I'm out. No tick from Deborah Meaden out because the investment doesn't offer enough of a stake in the business. But the dragons the entrepreneurs came in for are still in the running, and one of them is about to reach her verdict. Anything that makes pricing more transparent for the consumer, I think, is great, and the more the merrier. But I'm also very aware, and it's also from experience, and hard experience, um, it is very, very, very difficult to get your name out there so that you are the first port of call for that consumer. So I, I really hope you do it. Thank you. But I'm afraid it's not for me. Good luck, I'm afraid I'm out. A heavy blow for the entrepreneurs as one of their most coveted dragons bows out. Sarah Willingham's exit clears the way for the other dragons. Will tech giant Peter Jones see traction in TickX? The big issue I have about this is that I think as you grow your business model, you are going to come under pressure from the very people that you're trying to help today. So what this investment comes down to is, are you going to be the next Uber of the event marketplace? That's what you're really coming up I with in a nutshell. I completely here. agree. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. I was about to go out and I just talked myself into potentially making an offer. <laughs> Please do. So, guys, I'm going to make you an offer. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. But I'm going to de-risk it because I'm actually going to offer you half of the money. OK. And I'm going to be really specific with this because I think that you're going to need a little bit of a helping hand with somebody that has real intrinsic knowledge. I know that Nick, for example, has got great experience mm. specifically in what you are going to need to achieve. I'm, but I'm going to offer half of the money but I want 10%. Peter Jones does a U-turn and makes a strategic offer with the proviso that Nick Jenkins also comes on board. Will the online innovator think this website could be the gateway to more success? I think one of the things to, input, to, 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 to understand here compared with a financial investment is that we. we when we make these investments on here, we're, we're giving so much more than just writing the cheque. Yeah. Here, you need our input. And in particular, you need a lot of input on customer acquisition. And that's something I've got a track record in. Um, so I'll offer the other half for 10%. A joint bid on the table, asking for 20% of the business, but offering a wealth of experience and one of the dragons Sam and Steve were so keen to secure. Time for some tactical thinking by Tuka Suleiman. I don't normally invest as a passive investor. I've got a very similar online business called Bike Soup. Yeah. They're on my premises. I'm with them all day long. We're working together with developers. Um, no. I'll give you all the money for 15%. Right, OK. OK. 
Thank you very much. A setback for the Jones-Jenkins partnership as Tuka Suleiman comes in with a 5% lower offer. Right, can we have a word? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Two bids have now been tendered, both at a much greater equity stake than the entrepreneurs were offering, posing a dilemma for the young businessman. Did you want to say your off reason? If we've already discounted the round. Yeah, no, just not, we can't go anywhere. Yeah, no, we can't. Yeah. yeah, OK, great. Yeah. OK. okay. Um, so thank you, all, all three of you, for the offer. Um, I think the problem is we, we just couldn't drop our valuation. I, I don't know if there's any movement, but we couldn't go to those kind of percentages. We've, you've already given one, these guys, 15% for 75K. That was at the, uh, the very first stages. We've significantly de-risked it now. Look, I, 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 I think we're probably going to struggle to, to, to agree on terms here. Um, we, we, we wouldn't be able to move far enough. Good luck, but I'm out. I'm not willing to change my offer. I think my offer was very fair, so I'm going to say that I'm out. Stalemate, leading to the loss of two dragons and all the experience they bring. Will Tuka Suleiman be prepared to negotiate? OK. Well, look, guys, it's, it's very apparent um, where you're at. Um, I'm tempted. Um, however, I'm not willing to lower my percentage. You know? For that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. So near, yet so far. Steve and Sam's refusal to give away a bigger equity stake leads to them leaving the den without that winning ticket for a dragon partner. That was intense. <laughs> that really was. Well, that was uh, an experience, to say the least. Uh, I feel like I've been in the ring for about four hours. <laughs> that was a hard decision to make. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah, no, it really was. <laughs> well... I think the difficulty is when they've got a, a shareholder structure in advance of coming here, that it's very difficult for them to manoeuvre. They might live to regret it when they're struggling to get customers. Yep. It's a decision which will stick with us forever, <laughs> and I hope we don't regret it. Last to face the rapid fire of the Dragons is a partnership who are hoping their careers as captains in the army will prove a good training ground for their time in the den. Let's hope they don't get their marching orders from our five investors. Both of us have deployed on operations. We joined the army, we went through Sandhurst. Got to do some mindfulness, think about your sweaty hands and how they feel classed together. We wouldn't have got through Sandhurst if we didn't have a bit of fight and a bit of gumption about us. I hope that when it does get very tough in the den, we've got that fight in us to really go for it. Hello, dragons. My name is Rachel Day, and this is Mary Whitaker and we run Love Keep Create. We're here today to ask you for £50,000 in return for a 10% equity share in our business. If you've got children, or if you've ever had anyone close to you pass away, chances are you may have been left with a few special items of their clothing that you just didn't want to get rid of. This was the basis for our business, Love Keep Create. My husband was deploying to Afghanistan in 2011. We had a small baby. So I took some of our son's favourite clothes and turned them into a keepsake for my husband to take with him. So how does it work? You go onto our website and choose from our wide range of keepsake designs, then send the clothing in to us. We create your beautiful keepsake, usually embroidering it with a child's name, date of birth or other special message. In 2015, we turned over £190,068, producing 3,292 units, 
with a net profit of £54,783. In the first four months of 2016, we've seen a growth rate of 90.6%. Thank you very much. We would love to show you some of our products. A pitch with military precision from Rachel Day and Mary Whitaker. They're looking to enlist a dragon to their business by offering a 10% stake in it. In return, they're asking for £50,000. Can I just say I'm delighted that I get the dragon and Peter's got the monkey. I like that a lot. <laughs> What's I that? promise you it wasn't. <laughs> That's it. Oh, OK, got it. Peter Jones is first to question the entrepreneurs. Um, I don't want to ask, but I'm hoping this commando is still alive somewhere. <laughs> That's my husband. It's her husband's shirt. Good. He's so, actually in the building upstairs, I believe. Is he really? So he is, yes. So that is a shirt. So they send yes. in a shirt, and then do I, how do I choose this? And is most of your business online? People can go onto our website, they can choose. We've got lots of different types of kind of keepsake categories. That's what we call our military monkey. Um, so people select the item that they want, they get a whole load of options that they can um, click on to add embroidery, to make it large, size, things like that. And the, um, your team that work for you, are they employed or are they on piecework or are they self-employed? How does that work? Um, so currently we have five people who are on employed contracts and we have two or three who are self-employed. And this year, what do you think your turnover is going to be? Our projection say? for this year is 323,000. What do you need to do to achieve that? Can you do that within your existing organisation with the same number of seamstresses? We um, actually take 44% of generally of our orders between the 1st of September and the end of November. So it is quite a seasonal business. So we've made relationships with a couple of local textile factories that could offer us a number of hours per week to enable that um, kind of rapid increase in orders. That, that's really interesting. I think probably answers one of the questions that I have, which is about the, one of the greatest problems with this kind of business is, is managing seasonal yeah. demand. Mm -hmm. Because you've, you've got very little going on, you have to have sufficient premises to be able to deal with your Christmas spike, uh, and you've got to have people trained up to deal with the Christmas spike, and then what do you do with them for the remaining nine months of the year? Um, but it sounds like you've got that cracked. Very good. If anyone knows about the problems of seasonality, it's the king of greetings cards, Nick Jenkins. But his obvious approval aside, Peter Jones wants to know more about that spike in orders in the autumn. Well, why September? Just the build up to Christmas. OK, so that's nothing to do with your specific marketing and targeting? We do very limited marketing currently and this is um, a small part of the investment that we want is actually to allocate to a proper marketing budget. Every time we've done a campaign it's had great results. We've worked it out basically that in terms of net profit for, fi for a £500 spend on Facebook advertising we get about £2,000 net profit. Wow. Okay, I mean my, my, uh, my reaction to that would, would be <laughs> fill your boots yeah, exactly. um, uh, and keep filling your boots uh, yeah. until, until you, until you meet, meet resistance and then you wouldn't need us at all. Partly we've been hampered by our existing website which hasn't been tracking um, the conversions so and ah. this is all part of our kind of ongoing learning sure. curve like we said we, we are we are not entrepreneurs and business people by nature we've got where we are today through learning everything ourselves the long and hard way. No, don't think you're not an entrepreneur just because you've had to learn the hard way. Yeah. I don't know any entrepreneur that hasn't learned it the hard way. Yeah. And, and your business has actually made a profit in its first year. Mine certainly didn't do that. Um, so, um, so you're a much better entrepreneur than him. Yeah, <laughs> much, 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 much better. News of a profit quadrupling marketing plan has certainly got the dragons standing to attention. And high street retailer Tuka Suleiman has another reason to be impressed. Mine is made of a horse and Curtis yes. shirt. So that's called a beautiful our... 100 doubles fabric. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our daddy dress. So we take mummies, daddies, grandparents' shirts, and when they get a bit worn out around the cuffs, cuffs and collars, we can turn them into a dress for a little girl. We also do a version of a shirt for a little boy. Somebody's gone to a, a lot of design skill to, to design that. Do you have any uh, of your stuffed animals ready-made 
so they can just put embroidery on and send out, or everything you do is recycled? At the moment, everything is recycled. We haven't gone down that route at the moment because this is, is working for us. I can understand if you said we've got 24 characters, we can offer those ready-made, so that's for our instant business, and we offer another service, which is very niche business. I'm not sure. I think you've got a great idea. My only reservation would, would be, how far can you grow it? Tuka Suleiman casts a seed of doubt over the scalability of this bespoke business. But could Deborah Meaden be toying with investment? People always say to me, what's that moment in the den? I say, when well, you get a combination of clearly a good product with good people, and you're that. So I am going to make you an offer, and, and following those words, it'd be very rude of me not to offer on the basis that you've asked. So make you an offer, £50,000 at the... And I want 10% of the business, which is what you offered. Thank you, Thank you so please. much. An offer, and a rare one at that, asking for no more equity than the entrepreneurs wanted to give away. But has Nick Jenkins seen it all before? I get to see quite a lot of personalised gift businesses. Surprise, surprise. And I think this is one of the best personalised products I've seen because it really touches on what's important about personalization, which is that sentimental connection with somebody. And it's not just about writing people's names on things. Um, and it's about memories, and that, that's the most important thing. Um, so I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 10%. Thank you. Nick Jenkins aligns himself to the entrepreneurs with compliments and an offer. Does Sarah Willingham also want to love, keep and create an investment? I love the product. I think um, the fact that quite genuinely it makes me choke a bit when I, th when I see that we miss you, Grandad, and you think, you know, it really is a memory that you've created, which I think is exceptional. One of the things that I can really help you with is on the Facebook advertising side. Um, we spend a lot of money on Facebook with a very high conversion rate. It's something we're very, very good at. Um, so I think that's something I can help with a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to offer you all of the money for exactly what you came in and asked for, which is, I think, very fair, 10% of the business. Thank you. Sarah Willingham attempts to manoeuvre herself into pole position by offering not only cash, but also help with that all-important marketing strategy. Is Peter Jones poised to add to the hat-trick of offers already in the mix? I actually thought for the first time ever in Dragon's history that you were going to get an offer for less equity than you asked for. <laughs> And I'm surprised that you haven't, actually. So, um, I think you have a really, really neat business, and I think it is something that people will really radiate to, and I can see it. But, and I do think this is a big but, I think this is a, a tough business to grow, because I do think that it will be fairly niche, when you bring awareness to it, I then think you're going to see people entering the market. So, sadly, I'm going to say that I'm not going to invest and I'm out for those reasons, but only because of those reasons. Thank you. Peter Jones politely declines the investment offer. Can Tuka Suleiman put his earlier worries over scale aside to add the business to his textile empire? Look, I think, uh, I think you're both great. I think the product's great. I think your ideas are great. You've already had three offers. And, and, and I, 
I'm torn because I know what I could do with it, but it's, it would take far too much of my time to where I would help you grow the business. And uh, would you split it? Because you've got a lot of that product, obviously, the, in, in terms of the production side. Look, to, I'll be honest, if I, if I was to do it, I'd want a bigger percentage. It's not worth my while. And for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. Tuka Suleiman declined the offer, leaving three Dragons in and two out. Thank you all so much for your offers. Would you mind if we just had two minutes just to chat and Talk to the ourselves? wall. Yeah. Thank Talk you. to the wall. <laughs> I know, I know, but, but I would have won 25% of this. Yeah. Do you want to split it? Do you want to split it? No, no. I think we just go for that. I think so. I just think... With three identical bids on the table, it's not a question of which offer is right for the entrepreneurs, but which dragon. And it's only 10% and it's £50,000. As I said, thank you so much for your offers and for your time for us to come and pitch to you today. We have made a decision. We would um, love to accept your offer, Deborah. <laughs> but thank you so much, Sarah and, and Nick, as well. We are really grateful. Yeah. Well oh, I'm really pleased. Apart from the outside, from your neck of the woods. Yeah. How we do Victory. Mary and Rachel leave the den with exactly what they came in for. £50,000 for 10% equity and a dragon with the know-how to take their business to the next level. Did, happen. <laughs> Did that just happen? Well done, Deborah. I love that. Well, I think you deserve, then, the monkey commando. Uh, the, 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 the monkey commando, thank you very much. We're thrilled that we got Deborah. She's got some really relevant experience which would be amazing for us. We are just so happy. We really are. We need to go and sit down somewhere quiet and open a bottle of wine, I think. Memorable events in the den. Because there's no second chance when you get an offer from a dragon. You accept right there and then or you leave with nothing. And we saw the full range of experiences. Steve Pearce and Sam Coley stood their ground and refused to budge on that all-important equity stake. And then Rachel Day and Mary Whitaker had no need to budge. They got exactly what they wanted from Deborah Meaden. A striking contrast. Coming up next time... You name her the Don. I'm happy. And then you call Peter Jones the jerk. <laughs> Is that your prediction? that every household in the country will own one of those. You've now moved into argument mode. Take a deep breath and focus on the business. You're too niche. I think you'll really, really struggle, if I'm being honest. It's a black hole, just eating money. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now we're talking. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs>